I have been asked to point out that there are raffle tickets on sale with many very impressive prizes. Some of these prizes include things like a trainee locksmith's gnome costume, the smallest keyhole in Britain, a family of trained puffins who can ride a vintage traction engine, and a photograph of Ray Davis out of the kinks pushing a duvet into a bread bin. Now, without further ado, I must introduce our next speaker, our Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Carl Portman. And uh, his talk tonight is entitled, A Fatal Case of Elephant Teasing. Thank you. <laughs> Carl Portman. First things first, can everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm a bit manic, I walk around a little bit, I'm afraid, but uh, I'll try and stay still. Uh, just before I start, first thank you for coming in, really appreciate that. I hope everyone's eaten and drunk something. Um, I've never been to this before, I don't know most of the people, but I'm really delighted to be here. Uh, I've not known John that long, I've not been around him that long, but um, he helped me to publish my latest book, which I'm really pleased about. And if it wasn't for John and Corinna, I wouldn't have done that. Um, we had a cocktail party last night because I rang up from Banbury where I live and I said, I've worked with the military for years, he goes, oh, is it, is it a tie, is it a jacket, what is it? He said, oh, I don't care, come, come along with the t-shirt mentioning the Pope. So, um, so, no, so hold this, John. So I did. <laughs> Excuse the nakedness. So this is what I came with. <laughs> That's the campaign underway. Right, I don't do that. The me and the Catholic Church had a part in the way some years ago. <laughs> well, it, it, it can always be a reason for a bit of clemency for you, John. Um, I, I don't do notes. Sometimes I make things up as I go along, but I hope you find this interesting. There's no paranormal. Thank um, you very thank much. Thank you, John. Or UFOs. But it's about, I love natural history, and I really love tarantulas and scorpions, anything with eight legs. Um, I love all animals, but I hated spiders up to about 1995. I used to kill every one that I saw, even a small one was out to kill me. So I'd stamp on it, whatever. And uh, one day in Norwich, I was having a shave, and this huge Tegenaria house spider just came, obviously wanted to kill me. So it came for me, and I got some shaving foam, sprayed it, it's just a mound of white. And it just sort of shook itself and came forward again. So I did the same thing again, and it did it again, and then lurched, and then died. And I guess some kind of uh, moral grenade went off in my head, <coughs> and I thought, this is not a fair fight. <laughs> so I need to get into spiders, so I bought the biggest one I could find, a big tarantula, and next minute I found myself in South America, <laughs> looking for them, and uh, sort of detailing and researching them. So I, I put myself wholeheartedly into it, and um, Australian tarantulas, there aren't many in Britain. I mean, I used to keep to 1,500 and spend six hours a day feeding them, and it was a real obsession, which it still is, but with less real bodies. And uh, I always wanted to go to Australia, and there is a story about the Australian whistling spider, which I, I know there's an Australian, at least one in the audience tonight, but when I speak to them, they don't really know what it is, if it exists, and I thought, well, it's an opportunity to go out there in my better half suit tucked away in the corner, and uh, go out and have a look. So I just wanted to take you to Australia for probably about 40 minutes. I might use the full hour because I'm really tired and I need to catch up on some, some time. And um, I'll just take you on a trip a little bit with me. This is done by my great friend John Wardle. I wanted a, a, a picture of a spider that was a bit unique and obviously to do with the Oz. So this is what I got. So, this works well, it should. Here's where I went to, Port Douglas. Oh, I've got my little pointer here. It works. Uh, Port Douglas, up in Queensland. Um, I'm not an expert on Australia, but I'm certainly told there's only about 1% of Australia is rainforest now, and that there's plenty of Australians that have never been there, so I consider myself really lucky to have done that. And um, it's never lower than 14 degrees up there, which really suits me because I hate the cold. So I'm, I'm definitely going to go back. 
Port Douglas is where we stayed. It's unique because two world heritage sites meet, Barrier Reef and the Rainforest. And we stayed somewhere in there, which is tremendous. And I hope you can see that's a beautiful place. And uh, the big question is what, before we went, I went 20,000 mile round trip to find the spider, what is the whistling spider? What's it all about? And um, clearly, it's not mythical because I, I, I believe I've seen one or two in captivity, although they were dubious uh, originality, I would say. But it's notably not mythical, it definitely should be out there. I'll just call it the barking spider, the whistling spider, the spider, the brush footed spider, the cone footed spider, all sorts of different things. And the reason why it makes this noise is that on the front penny parts, the two little legs, for those uninitiated, um, they rub those together and make a hissing sound, and that term has different, really different term meanings, but basically it means keep away. Um, it's a warning, deterrent. And um, I've heard many spiders do this, but uh, not the Australian ones. So there we are, I've just said that. And it's called stridulation. I'm sure quite a few of you would already know that. So they do make a noise, but I thought, well, stridulation, whistling, would I call it the same thing? I'm not sure. And they are pretty much used to frighten aggressors. Some of the big African spiders, the big king baboons, do that quite a lot. Some of them just don't give you the warning, they bite, which uh, you can learn to your own cost. So what is the species? They've got something called Salinocosmia out there, something called Phlogialis, all these lovely names. I just wanted to find it you know, and then uh, worry about what it might be afterwards. So, the quest began in a place called Cooper Creek. I managed to find a contact who said that he'd, uh, he got one in this area of land that he managed. Pristine rainforest, beautiful rainforest actually, an area where, to quote him, white man had never trodden in some places. So I hired a car and went up there and, and uh, this was the first thing we came across. But of course that wasn't what I was looking for but I was really pleased to find a huntsman spider, a female guarding a really large egg sac. And that's actually on the underside of a dustbin lid which was on the floor. Um, I, I was really, really happy to find it but we, we made sure we didn't disturb it too much. And anyway, we moved on and found this, that's the bird dropping spider, a little beauty, there's the eyes around here, and you can probably just see the sort of legs curled up there. What's amazing about these, you know, camouflage is a big key of course, you know, if you can't be seen you can't be eaten, and if something can't see you, you can eat it. And I love the way that, you know, it makes these white sort of bird dropping marks, I've not seen much you do it, but, you know, to be able to do that is fantastic, you know, the silk display. We don't really know what these, they're actually red. No one really knows what they're for. I think it's something like if you are going to be eaten, maybe that's the head area, I don't know. But it's a beautiful spider. And uh, I'm taking you on this journey, not just with spiders, but things that came across. I think everybody must know what that is. Cassowary. And there aren't many left. Uh, you know, they, they will be in danger one day, becoming extinct. And they used to roam around in the forest there, but uh, there was just none left. And we asked one of the ladies if she'd seen one, and she said, I wish. Um, they are beautiful, and uh, as, as you've probably seen on TV, they can, they can be quite vicious. They've got really long front claws, and they can just disembowel you in about two seconds, and would happily do so if you approach them at the wrong time. And this white knee cricket is a beauty, it's uh, so big. But uh, I just like the wonders of nature, the things that you come across before you actually find what you're looking for. So they're wonderful, make a hell of a run. But no whistling spider yet, but did find these. Plenty of huntsman spiders on the, the barks of the trees. Um, these are called, anyone know what these are? Nephilim. Yep, yeah, it's Macon and uh, Nephilim. <laughs> That was, and you can't tell scale canyon photos, but that's the biggest I've ever seen. It's a huge, beautiful thing on a massive web. And for those that don't know, these webs can catch birds, bats, no problem at all. Apparently even some, a human had difficulty once trying to get through one, but I don't really believe it. And again, camouflage, you know, wherever you look, there is a saying in the rainforest, isn't there? It's not enough to look, you have to see. Once you've got your eye in, 
you can find all sorts of beautiful things. So, is that design, you know, God make it? It's another question, but it's brilliant anyway. So, at this time, I was asking all sorts of people, you know, they this is mad English, we're walking around trying to find this spider. And um, reports were, were coming through on the radio, and some people getting excited in Port Douglas um, from a place called the Atherton Tablelands, or something amazing that was going on. So amazing, it's blank. So, there was a story about a spider that had, uh, well, they were saying whistling spider, that had captured another animal. And you can see here, this is quite incredible really, this, this, this is the Nephila, I can't remember the chap's name, but he called his photographs in the garden, with a, with a bird that had flown into that web. So that's quite an incredible sight, that. I mean, they're small birds, fair enough, but of course the spider will, will overpower anything that it can. It will eat anything that it can, so they're quite stunning. People said, we found it, we found you a whistling spider, but I had to disappoint them and say, no, it's Nephila. But amazing things, really, to be honest. Oh, yes, that's the bird, the mannequin. And again, I hope everyone can see that. Um, this was again a Cooper Creek. Uh, large catered is, it's almost a foot long, that thing was. Beautiful. It's sort of looking, it's facing downwards. The eyes are here. And it's easy to miss. I was walking past things, and the guy that was with me he sort of worked with the Atlas for about 15 years, and he said, You're just not looking. You haven't got your eye in there. It took a long time. But that's fantastic. So I pretty much looked everywhere. Same time, there's cross spider. Don't know what this one was, and I don't think you can see it that well, but it's a, a female with spider limbs, and they're all on the roof of this little hole here. <coughs> two minds about it, but I wanted a photograph, but I did put it back. So it's still not what I'm after, but it's fantastic to see this variation of uh, the spiders that I would not normally have had the opportunity to see. <laughs> and it's another Nephila here, and you, you can't tell the scale, but it's, it seemed to me anyway, it was almost the size of a dinner plate, it was massive, and, it, and you can't see the web, but that, that spans this whole area really huge, so it was, you have to look upwards as well as downwards. And the terrain that we were looking in to try and find these things was pretty impenetrable. I mean, for those of you that have done it, I'm sure quite a few have. It's really hard work, it's hot, the ground is really rock hard, and it could take you hours just to dig you know, a foot into the ground or whatever to find what you want. This was a really nice ride above the, the canopy, actually. Place called Karandi, if anyone ever gets the chance, I really recommend it. So it's great to look above and see some of the, flower, the uh, trees flowering. But could they have been here? <coughs> no one knew what terrain that they, they lived in. Um, it certainly wasn't trees, but this was the Genku. This was this chap's orchard with the rainforest behind it. Lovely place to live. And again, try, trying to get through all that was quite difficult, but. Fantastic to find out all the different uh, plants and animals there. But not far away was this area. And this is the bit I'm interested in there. Anyone, any idea what's going on there? Sorry, I couldn't hear. Crops. Yeah, you've obviously, uh, <laughs> this has been there all now. You're way ahead of me. Where the, the, the crops eat the shoots here of the of the trees and they just, it's their favourite resting place, so of course I didn't know that first time out there, so uh, I had to be careful of all the areas that I wasn't meant to go to <laughs> in my quest for this beast, and then I've come across another beast, like that one, and uh, I did take that photo, it was a little bit of a cheat on it, we went on a, a, a trip on a crocodile, a crocodile, well a sanctuary for want of a better word, and they hold sort of half a chicken out on a long stick. <laughs> and they just come along. But they, they can, I, I didn't know. But they, you know, when you're in a, a canoe or a small boat, they can easily just jump straight over it. They can, they can just crash out of the water this high, this high, straight over it, no problem at all. So I'm never going in a canoe there. So finding all these good things along the way, in the end, Sue and I settled for the, uh, the little one. <laughs> the safest we could do. 
But uh, it, was, it was great to, to find this. Okay, now, there is the spider. Um, I don't, I'm sorry if you can't see that too well, but this is an area of, of ground that was under that lid. Thank you for that. It was under that <coughs> bin lid. And this was the spider. So it's just, to most people, it's just a, a plain brown spider. But you know, talking to Matt last night, you know, you could look at a fish and go, that's just a fish, it's a, it's a small brown fish, but it means something to people. And that meant a lot to me to actually see one in the wild. It was a small one, a couple of inches, and I wanted to find a really large one, so I was, I was really pleased. But I have to admit, it was tinged with disappointment. So I uh, thanked the chap and uh, said I would keep looking. And this is just an interesting point. It seems to me, and I found it in, uh, in Ecuador as well, that wherever there are spiders, there are centipedes around. I don't know the answer to that. You know, this is perhaps the, a great weekend for someone to have a hypothesis on that. But there always seems to be a centipede around there. They must have maybe some kind of symbiotic relationship. I don't know. So that, that was quite a big one. Quite what an estimate it wants to be. Centipedes will eat spiders. They will. That's right. But these, these, they will eat spiders. Centipedes. It's a good point. Those big scallopenders certainly will. These were just. Side by side, it's, it's strange, very weird. Um, it's a guy called Stuart Douglas. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of him. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have. <laughs> <laughs> I met him, it's the only time I met him, but he definitely had a death wish. He, um, he, he was quite extreme, but he, he helped me. He said I could uh, you know, come and have a look around his Venom Zoo and uh, his, his inland Taipan there, which looks like it's just eaten. And he was keen to hold all the scorpions and the spiders and said, yeah, I may just hold all these, but I do have a bit of a golden rule, which is to try not to be an idiot. And uh, I don't really handle them unless I have to. Um, so he, he was helpful to me, but I've since found out, you know, a couple of TV programmes, he's quite a controversial figure, he's Stuart. But he had some nice creatures like that one, considering it does be a weird weekend. It's, uh, it's a bit weird, but at least how gecko really, really sought after apparently for people stuffing them in tubes and trying to get them out and other horrific things. But it is an absolute beauty. <coughs> and uh, the book, I mean I just mentioned the book a couple of times and will at the end, but the books, my book's actually dedicated to Steve Irwin because it doesn't matter whether you liked him or didn't like him, he, you know, he brought a lot of natural history into our homes, into our living rooms. And uh, um, the, the chap there, he, he got this on his wall in his, uh, in his office, not only the king in his gutter, he was also his hero. So it's quite a sobering moment to come across that, to be honest. But even in, even in such times, it can be humour. There's this little joke called Crocodile Tears, it says on there, Steve Irwin, 62, 32, 36. So even the crocs were crying for him, so it's quite funny. And again, there, there we are, well, he says it's Floji Ellison, not so in the Cosmere, but some nice sized spiders, but again, I'm not going to cheat and say, oh yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was found in the wild, it wasn't a part of Stuart's collection, so I was really happy, again, I hadn't found it, so you'll, you'll know yourself, it's, if you go on a quest, you've got to do these things yourself. So I've got more of an idea, sorry if I keep pointing that. More of an idea what I was looking for. Still just a brown spider, but you know, some, clearly these are male, and you know, it's going to be difficult to tell them apart unless you do it scientifically. And of course, you can't take them in the country, so that wouldn't be possible. So I, I started to get a little bit desperate because time was running out, and uh, I thought maybe I'm not going to find this after all. I might have to end up going to the beach or some such horrible thing. But as we say, this guy was called Jim Boongar <coughs> Edwards, fine chap. Um, he, everybody had a view on this, this spider, all these people, so he was experts, kids, and everybody. Yeah, you'll find it here, it looks like that, but actually none of them did really know, which, which is fair enough. So I had to sit down and think, well, who, who could find this? Who could help me find the Holy Grail? Who could do it? There must be somebody out there, so lots of phone calls and trying to get contacts. So this was a job for Chapel Clay. 
Hey, my hero. Really nice guy, wasn't he? So embarrassed that I told him to. So, local expert, I don't like the term expert, but it's such a thing really we all learn, but he said he knew where to find them, definitely knew where to find them in the wild, and uh, I believed him. He's an unbelievable guy, and that was music to my ears. I just wanted to share with you a quote of his, which I love, because I said this must be the greatest job in the world. You know, working out here with all these animals, why don't you do more photography? And, I, and this could apply to us all probably, whatever we're interested in. If you can't see, it says, when I have the incentive, I never have the time. And when I have the time, I never have the incentive. So I thought it was pretty cool. And, uh, we can probably all relate to that. So, we got to this secret location. It's not like a crop circle where you can they've been there. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's like that because too many people, unfortunately, would find out where it was and then well, get on the next plane and uh, just completely rape the area of these animals. Um, so I got pretty much down to ground level and uh, this little chap came along, he was just brilliant, just a wolf spider. And uh, again, it reminded me of that time back in, uh, in Britain, back in Norwich, of, of the you know, the size difference, it doesn't matter, size isn't important sometimes. Thank heavens there. So, first burrow, we found this burrow in the ground, nothing in there. This ground, it was a bit wet, it just started to rain, typically, but it was rock hard, it was just like concrete. So, it's coming into the rainy season, which is pretty good, because then, that's when a lot of um, the young should, should emerge, there should be more insects, more food, so it's a good time to go. But it's right on the end of the dry and uh, very, very difficult. And you wonder how one spider can make that. That really was rock hard. Maybe they made it when it was softer. But nothing there was really exciting. You know, the heart's, the heart's going, pulse is racing. Can I find it? No. But, oh, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if I can see it. Spider link, can you see it just on the roof there? Can you see the spider link there? Yes. Yeah. Is it difficult? Yeah. But there are. There's a little spider in there, just about to walk underneath that, that hole. It's, well, there's two, so I thought, right, there's young. There's got to be another somewhere. So, to quote ZZ Top, no other reason than I think I was playing it at the time we put this together. <laughs> there we are, some legs, some promise. Maybe two burrows that we went to. And at last, the old black heart of the Indian tickling trick, which has worked many a time. And uh, I said to Clay, look, you, you may be the man, I know you live here, but he, he's not done anything with spiders before, so I guarantee you, if we see one, you'll get one chance, and one chance only, because they seem pretty clever, the spider could be clever. When, when they come out of the burrow, that's the one time you get a chance to block the burrow off so you can you know, examine the spider, photograph it. You don't do that, they're too nervous and won't come out again. And he said, oh, no problem, I'll, I'll block it off. I said, well, we need detail. How will you block it off? I'll use a leaf, big leaf, no problem, mate. Okay, right, let's do it. So we started to uh, see if we could trap the spider out for a little bit of supper. Get it to work. So not yet. So you're standing there, not interested. And it was just so tempting, you just thought, just, just come out just for a minute. And finally, it's a bit blurred because it took a second. <laughs> that was the one lunge. That was the one opportunity to get some card down the back of there and just block that off. Um, but what happened was, he got the leaf, and he shook the leaf down the side, and she just turned back and just powered straight through the middle of the leaf. It was quite a thick leaf, powered straight through the middle of it, straight back in the hole. So we exchanged a few pleasantries. <laughs> I said, look, I know I don't live here, but I told you. Fine, fine, that's not working, that's good. So, anyway, we, we couldn't get into photographers, so there's one of those dilemmas again, which you, you know, I'm sure many of you have been, I don't know. Do we dig her out? Don't really like to do it, you know, it's, but I, I've gone such a long way, I needed a photograph. So we said, okay, then we'll, we'll, we'll try and dig out for a. And I started digging in this, you can see it's not much to me, and I thought, I paid this guy to, to be with him, and I said, what am I doing? You take the shovel, I paid you. So he's got a big guy clay, so I started digging. Can you see the spider links there? At all? One there? One there? 
Well, that's be pretty difficult. You've really got to get your eye in, I suppose. But again, they are there. So, she eventually came out and uh, came straight for me. <laughs> so they weren't, they weren't meant to be uh, too aggressive, really. But um, straight to the camera. And the interesting thing at that point was there was no whistling, there was no hissing, no stridulation at all. Uh, but I was just really, really pleased, you know, almost overwhelmed to actually see it. And so finally, I managed to get a photo of one actually in the wild, which is brilliant. And you can see she's very thin there, she's not eaten much at all. In captivity, as again, as some of you might know, there's you know, if you disturb them too much, they might eat the young if they get too hungry. Um, if conditions aren't right, obviously. Uh, she didn't, she was obviously a very good parent. And um, looked after the young. There's Clay. Um, very difficult to see on there, but the spider's actually there. It, it just doesn't look much at all. It took ages to take that out. But um, he was fascinated. He, he's actually asked me to go back and do some filming there with him at some point because he, you know, he didn't realise how difficult they were to find and uh, how difficult they were to extract what you found. And I'm on the slide 38 already, so I'm going to be taking questions. So. It was madness. <coughs> so I definitely learned that by law in Australia, I'm sure that lady I spoke to will bear me out, you can't go within 10 metres of a croc. However, it doesn't mean to say a croc can't get within 10 metres of you. And um, there were a couple of cases while we were there, a young lad had been uh, killed, and a guy who had been torn up, well, he'd been, been eaten in, in half, and really. he'd been putting lobster pots out down by the river, and um, that wasn't too bad, but he kept coming back to the lobster pots at the same time every day, and the crocs worked this out, and they, they just took him, they, they found his dog, and then some of him, and there were also a group of Germans that were in a 4 by 4 and they broke down right in the middle of the river, and they, so they all got out, splashing about, trying <laughs> to push the car out, and they got, um, Roasted. And I've mentioned that, it's not enough to look, you have to say this is my final test for you really. Um, I'm asking you what you see in this picture. So just have a look, I know it's difficult to put it back, it's probably not projected that well. But just have a look for a second. I mean, nobody could be right or wrong, it's whatever you see. Ah, oh, thank you for that. Just, just have a look just for a second. I think that it's a wonder of natural history that most of the time you, know, you walk past things and you, you miss all the things that you wanted. But the guy I was with was brilliant to find these. So, any ideas? Somebody said a monk here, and I was taking mind expanding drug on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, I took some delighted to see what that is. Any ideas? Check something out. Spider. Yeah. Spider. Who said that? You've got the pointer, or do you want Yours is better than mine. Yours is bigger than mine. Well, I'm disappointed again. Depends if I can get out of the pocket. Just see if you can point to where you think the spider is. Oh. Hey, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Look at that, he's a big head. Sorry, I've got to take that off. Is that the body there, and there's, le there's a leg and a leg, and that's a leg? And that's a leg, and there's a leg and a leg. Can anyone else see that? Yeah. yeah. Did most? Did anyone? Did, did most of you see that? Yeah. yeah. No. No, some did, some didn't. But he's smack on, brilliant. So we, we're going together on the next trip. You can find all the good <laughs> stuff. So you can see the spider. However, there's more in that picture. More to that picture than the see eye. So I'd invite you just to look again. I see another spider just below. <laughs> it could be a few things, could be that monkey. Oh, you know who all the speakers are this weekend, don't be walking around like this, don't they? <laughs> right, let's do it. Right, I'm sure you've got the thing in. We've got the spider. 
I was really pleased to take that photo. I mean, yeah, that was that one moment when I just thought, I don't care where I've been, this one photo is just fantastic. I'll be able to use it again and again. And he said, well, there's more. <sighs> and I can show you this, but there's the spider. It's sort of a little bit enlarged. But if you can see, there are hundreds and hundreds of tiny spiders here. In all this grey area, it's, it's, it's a nursery. So all up here was full of spiders. It's pretty brilliant. I think I think it's really difficult to see. In fact, there's a good one up. Can you see? Oh, I'll move that to the side. Just to the left of that, there's the black eyes are there. And the legs are just coming out there. Can you see? I'm nearer, so it's unfair. But it's, I mean, it just shows it's, it's not what you do find, it's what you can't find. I'm nearly at the end. Oh, as John said, I could do one shameless plug, but um, I got some copies of him. I've got about six copies this weekend. If anybody wants one, I'm going to throw my second, uh, my, my other book in. Thanks for the memories. But my mate hated that title, so it was rubbish, so therefore I do. He called it that. Um, but, you know, just come and see me if you want a copy. I don't need to get this six, otherwise I'll starve and get even thinner. It's no good. But I will do. I've left plenty of time there to invite some questions if anybody wishes to ask anything. John? <laughs> John's missed the bones of me. You see the space? <laughs> Are these spiders protected in any way? Or can anybody just go in and, if they dare, to collect them? Australia is um, a really serious place to collect any spiders and uh, they are protected. You have to have, definitely have a license, definitely have permission. I mean, even if you're seen in some areas, you get reported. And um, I made sure that I contacted the various departments out there to say, I'm not taking anything, or I am taking something, photographs. But you can't, you, just, you can't take spiders out. In the trade, or in the hobby, Tarantulas, you know, we've got spiders from all over the world, but there's a dearth of anything from Australia. They've not been really studied that much, so that's why it's so great to go and see them. So, I mean, you uh, you have, you have to maybe take the word collecting out of your talk title for sort of about eight months ago, didn't you? Yeah, people get really precious about it, and I can understand that. Oh yeah, um, I understand. Yeah, people. I won't say from which countries, but you know, people I know, people that go out somewhere with a big suitcase and just they collect for a month. So they cram them. The first day they collect, they put spiders in little pots and they keep them there until the last day they, they collect. So they're there for a month. So by the time they come back, half of them are dead. And uh, I just don't agree with it. I do agree with taking a few specimens to bring into the hobby. You know, it's important bloodlines, not just going out there and just taking a whole, a whole colony of spiders. I tell you what, I'm always really self-indulgent uh, the weird weekend because through the year I've got I've got a fantastic job. I manage to wander around the country and sometimes wander around the world, meeting interesting people. And the reason I like the weird weekend, probably most of all, is that during the year I meet all these interesting people. I then get them to come down here and buy me drinks, I and mean, it doesn't get any better than this. Now I read a book that. This chap wrote. I bought it. I bought a book um, because it had an absolutely dreadful pun on the front cover. And anybody who has bad puns is good by me. So I bought a book called Fangs for the Memories, which was about a trip to South America and looking for Central America. Central America and looking for tarantulas. And then I met this, I was wandering around with a copy of it in my hand. And this funny little fellow came out from behind a pile of books and said, who are you? You've got my book. And I, said, and I said, golly, uh, yeah, you're Carl Ford. And we got talking. And then we got talking a bit more. I said, well, look, I want to publish one of your books. It's great being a publisher. You can actually go and you can actually make decisions to do stuff just because you want to do it. I had no idea if anyone would buy it. I wanted to publish it because I wanted to see what happened next. His first book made me laugh. And so I thought, hey, I want to find out what. What happens next? And he said, well, what about when we're going to be going to Australia soon? What about doing a book about that? And it was bloody fantastic. It's probably that and that, that and Andy's uh, book, Strangely Strange, the two books that I've enjoyed reading. And I know I've got about half a dozen of my authors in the audience here, but the ones that I actually enjoyed having by my bed as bedside reading. Perverse. 
<laughs> Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts, this is my part, and I don't take heckling for hippies. <laughs> in fact, I don't think we allow hippies in Waterbury. Uh, oh, God, I'm a hecker. Okay. John, there was one question in the back there. So I'd love well, to I was ask you, um, how do you feel with the possibility of one of the sort of giant spiders in Indonesia and Africa? Really excited, but <laughs> we come back to money for doing things. Mm. To, to, I mean, lots of people want to go out and fight and discover new spider and have it named after them. I'm not precious about that, but the, the knowledge that there, there's got to be, it's like life out there somewhere else. There's, there are spiders out there that have not been found. We know that this spider called Ferrofels of Blondi, the Goliath, the dinner plate size is the biggest known. But, I mean, I've known other species that grow equally large, and there's got to be other things. Now, I'm told, thinking, I want to go to Papua New Guinea, where there's still, there's still the cannibals in one small area there, at least. And I, I really want to find a, a big spider called Selenocosmia henesta, which is the Fak Fak Ochre. And I, I have one. Sorry? Did you say again? What yes. Is what is that one? It's called the Fak Fak Ochre. And it's, well, the, the, the uh, scientific name is Selenocosmia honesta. It's chocolate brown. I love chocolate spiders. And it's, it's a beautiful animal. And I had. I had one, once my friend had one, and then he had a problem in his spider room and everything got cooked and I was really, really upset. But they're out there, and you know, people go on holidays and tricks and they go, look at this spider room, thinking, well, what's that? Chagos Islands, John, for example. Chagos Archipelago. Yeah, this is one that uh, we have mildly in the pipeline. Has anyone ever heard of the Chagos Archipelago? Yeah. Don't you want to go there? Yeah. I'm a very patriotic Englishman. And I'm absolutely appalled at what my country did to the people of the Chagos Archipelago because they decided that these islands, which had been habited for over a thousand years, were a bit too near to an island. What the hell is one called? The big one where they made the edge of the naval base? I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. That's the the one. Next to an island called Diego Garcia. Diego Garcia. That they wanted to, to use as an American naval base. So, we kicked all the people out. We threw all the people out over a period of about eight years, and there's been nobody living there for nearly 40 years, just over 40 years now. They kicked all the people out, they got rid of them, they got rid of their pets, they leveled their houses, and there's been no one there for 40 years. And there's a possibility that Carl, and I've told him, while I can still walk, I want to do this one. This is one that, God, the idea of going to an uninhabited desert islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Gosh. I'm being as stuck there, John. I walk, I'm going to do it. What's that? I'm being stuck there. Oh, I don't care. Especially if it's in the winter. I'm very fond of walls, but not in the winter. The idea is being stuck on a deserted island. And that's where you could find something, you know. Well, some, yeah, some there'll spiders. be new species of spiders. There might even be new species of vertebrates, small, small reptiles and amphibians. It's going to be an amazing adventure. That's the biggest thing we've got in the pipeline at the moment. Guys, as always, Carl's been very, very good. We've actually come back on time. I do apologise, Carl, that you had to the end of your talk, put your head around the door and call me to come back in. But, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, and a bloody good author, Carl Porter.